Hello everyone and welcome to another Close to My Heart Twisted Sisters YouTube pop where we take items from a catalogue and repurpose what their original intention is for. So basically we take something and we twist it and make it into something unexpected. Today Katie Harweeks and myself are kicking off the YouTube hop. So make sure you check out Katie's video that will be airing today as well at the same time as mine. And following this one, Becky and Jessica will be joining in the YouTube hop tomorrow. And there will be links below for the rest of the ladies that are participating in this YouTube collaboration. I've decided to use the Fresh Paint Scrapbooking Stamp Set and Thin Cuts and twist this into something totally different from its intended purpose. I will just flip through and show you what Fresh Paint is all about. It's a brand new collection. It's vivid, it's bright, it has grungy aspects to it with a lot of texture and designs, graffiti style and retro style artwork. And I can't wait to share with you the designs that I am doing with these papers and the PML cards and these gorgeous acrylic shapes. There is a card making stamp set and also a scrapbooking stamp set. This is the one I'm going to be working with today. There is, of course, a scrapbooking workshop kit where you can follow the patterns or get the kit and make it all your own. And of course, there's also another card making workshop. But as you can see from all of these designs, they're quite bright, they're quite funky, and they're very, very cool. But what I've decided to do is to use this set, primarily these thin cuts, and create classic Christmas cards. And I'm gonna throw in a rainbow card as well. So make sure you hang around. I actually have five card designs to show you. Two I'm gonna make on camera, and three of them I'm gonna walk through how I've created them. First up, I wanna show you the technique that I'm using on these star shapes. They're not quite a formal star, which suits the fresh paint type design. They're a little bit loose in shape, but they can still make gorgeous classic style cards. I wanna run you through the technique of this because it will apply to all of the cards that I have to show you. And just bear in mind that all of these techniques can, of course, be translated to scrapbooking layouts. I'm going to bring in another thin cut that's available with the May-June catalogue. This is the decorative texture background. So basically what I'm doing is a twist upon a twist. I'm going to use this rather than the whole entire shape and place my stars. So I'm doing some double die cutting here. So I'm going to place these stars on top of this die and you can see I've spread them out quite well. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna use my old cuddle bug because it fits on the desk and I'm leading this face up I want to make sure that I put the right cutting plate on and I'm putting my cutting plate on top if I try and turn this over these are all going to move around now I put my dies on an angle especially when they're ones like this and I'm going to pass this through my cuddle bug machine probably giving it three possibly four passes and making sure that every time I wind it through, I'm hanging firmly onto this edge and then that edge and back again. So these don't move around because I can't use washi tape with this because it will just stick with all those little holes. Now, when I ran this through, I made sure that I only went to here and back and here and back again. If you go off the edge of the die, these are going to jump around and then you're going to move them and it will make a little bit of a mess with the cutting. It won't cut nice and cleanly with the design. So you can see I have these gorgeous shapes that I could use just like this. It's like a little imprint and I could adhere that straight to my projects without poking out all these holes. But I do want the holes in this. So I'm gonna bring in a tool that I've got. I've had one of these for years. All you need to do is put the stars down onto this and roll this back and forward and it loosens up all of these little holes quite easily and those that don't come out you can quickly poke through with your piercing tool but this makes it so much quicker than poking all of these out and you can see just by going backwards and forwards changing the angle you can get these little holes out and any that have not come out you can just get your piercing tool and quickly poke those out. So I'm going to set this aside. You don't need to see me poking all of these out on camera. The first card I'm going to use is going to use this gold glitter paper 
star that I cut out exactly the same way that I just showed you with the white and I'm going to put it on top of this scarlet piece but I'm finding that to be just a little bit too light I want to deepen that up a little bit so what I'm going to do is deepen the color with some scarlet ink and some blending I'm going in circular motions and I've just got a piece of paper here that I'm holding this just so that my fingers don't get too inky with this now you can do as much of this or as little of this as you want but you can see that this color is going into a really nice deep red and i don't need a particularly smooth blend because i am going to be doing another treatment to this so i'll just bring in an original piece of scarlet this is the light side and this is the dark side but by adding ink you get a lot more depth of color to that so here's the one that i prepared earlier with a lot more ink work around the edges i deepened it on the edges and then i did some flicks with just the straw with this gloss spray the gilt one but what i did the first time is I don't know if you can see there is a difference in shade here so it was a bit of an error but I quite like how it turned out the first time I did it the ink blending was still quite wet on the paper so the flicks that I created here actually sunk into the paper a little bit so I put it aside to dry and then I went back and I added some more so you can see that some of these are a little duller than the ones that I did when the paper was totally dry and I quite like this I think it gives it a bit of depth to this piece I've gone ahead and I've cut a piece of gold glitter paper so this one measures at three and a quarter and this piece here measures at three inches square so this is how I'm going to lay this out onto my card base my star is going to go over top and then I'm bringing in a Merry Christmas sentiment that I have stamped and heat embossed with gold embossing powder onto white cardstock and I've got this sentiment from the for all occasions stamp set so I've gone ahead and I've adhered the gold frame and then I've put a piece of fun foam down here because I want to pop that up so what I do when I do fun foam is I put the tape runner down and then I use a little bit of liquid glue as well and then that's sitting on top it also gives me some wiggle room to make sure that I get things nice and straight and then with this star because it's got quite a lot of holes I'm going to just bring in the aqua glue and I'm not squeezing at all I'm just touching this to the areas in between those holes and I'm concentrating on the inside section of this I'm not doing the outside where the points are or up into those points and then I'm just going to place that down and hold that in place because I want these points here to lift off from the edge of this panel and then I've done exactly the same thing this is another little strip of fun foam and I've put my tape runner down on it and I've cut this banner at about the same width and I really love the elegance of this card so I'm quite pleased with how this is looking compared to what fresh paint actually looks like in the catalogue I'll put a couple of little gold glitter gems at each end of this sentiment banner and this card is done and I'm hoping that gilt spray is picking up and the depth with the ones that sunk in to the inked piece of scarlet paper look compared to the bright shiny ones when the paper was completely dry so that's our first classic christmas card i have three other classic cards to show you that i've already assembled but before i do that i want to show you a rainbow card what i've done with this one is cut a card panel and then i've used the smallest of the stars to die cut around starting at the top it's sort of like a rainbow arch and of course I'm going to use rainbows I love using rainbow colors so I've run this through and done the first one and then I've rotated this and done ones just a little bit lower on each side and rotated it again so that they're not all sticking up exactly the same way I didn't want this to be totally uniform you can see here I've gone through and I've done exactly the same thing by die cutting these little stars out of rainbow colored cardstock and I want to adhere them to a card panel but I want the white to show through I am going to put this onto a piece of nectarine before I adhere it to the card but I didn't want the nectarine color showing 
through behind these colored stars. I wanted it to be white. So I'm going to adhere this panel. And the sentiment that I've used with this is from a National Scrapbooking Day set, which is currently available called Many Wishes. It's a card making set and it has a gorgeous floral stencil, but I really love all the sentiments in here. And this happy birthday fitted beautifully into here. So now all that's left to do is for me to adhere my stars into these little negative pieces that I have created. So I'm turning this around until I get them all matched up so that it's all ready for me to go and stick. These are not uniform stars, so I like to have them matching, but I'm going to do the same sort of thing that I did before with the Christmas card and only adhere this inside piece. So when I pick this up from the shape, I'm going to remember that this bit that I'm holding goes into this section here. And just like I did before, I'm not squeezing my liquid glue, I'm just letting gravity do its work. And I know that this bit goes in here and then I'm going to work my way around the rainbow. So while that ink is setting, I'm just going to put that onto the card panel. Sometimes it's easier to put the adhesive on the actual card base and then place the piece on top, centering it. I think this is a really fun, fresh looking card. And I'm just going to wait for that glue to set perfectly before I go around and flip up all my little pieces. So I'm going to do a quick clean up and then I'm going to bring in the other cards that I have made. So here's the first card that I made on camera with you. It's all nicely adhered. The aqua glue dries clear. So you just need to put little dabs on in the center and then let the glue do its work. I've created some more clean and classic Christmas cards. This one here, I've cut the star out of a white panel and laid that on top of a piece of scarlet colored cardstock that I have treated the same way with the inking to deepen the colors. I haven't done the gold flicks on this one. I've just kept this plain scarlet with the inking. And I really love how the double die cut star looks with this one. I've used exactly the same sentiment, a couple of gold glitter gems, and I've made a bow with the gold embellishing thread. The other Christmas card that I have made uses the smallest star in the set. I have kept some of them whole and only die cut those once and then some I've used the double die cut method on this and I've laid them out like a wreath. And then I've used the small bow die cut to create a gold glittery bow for the bottom of the wreath. And I've put little gold glitter gems into the center of each of the stars that are still visible and on each end of the Merry Christmas banner. This has also been head embossed with gold embossing powder. And I've actually put the panel onto a piece of gold glitter card stock. I've gutted out the middle of this and I've done exactly the same thing that I did with this one. There is a piece of fun foam under here to lift it up a little bit. While I was creating this one, I thought I'd have a bit of fun with a row of stars and make it into a birthday card. And with these ones, I've cut them in a row on different angles down the length of this card panel and then matted that card panel onto black and then inlaid these back in with the sections on the edge free of glue so they can be flipped up and made it into a happy birthday card with a few little itty bitty sparkles around around these stars just to bling it up a little bit more. And this is the rainbow card birthday card that I made on camera with you. The glue has adhered all these and I've flicked these up as well so that they are raised a little bit off the edge of their inlaid pieces. I really love how these cards are quite clean and classic. The touch of gold here makes them a very elegant type card. Totally different from what the Fresh Paint scrapbooking stamp set and thin cuts is designed for. This is a perfect set for skateboarding, biking adventures, anything outdoors, gaming, all those sorts of different types of activities. And I've enjoyed twisting this 
to make these sorts of designs instead. I'll have a link below to the playlist so you can always check back to see what the rest of the Twisted Sisters group are doing for this month. It'll be running over quite a few days and as I said before Katie and I are first up and tomorrow it's Becky and Jessica so make sure you come back to click on the links that I'll have below so you can see what they're up to. I'll put some still shots up at the end of this video. Happy crafting and bye for now.